Over the course of any day, support workers assist their clients to lead full and active lives, doing many different activities. This training is an opportunity to review the right way to perform selected personal care procedures and also to find out how to deal with situations that do not go according to plan. There are a number of important principles you must always think about when you provide any kind of personal care. Always read the client's care plan to find out appropriate care and support requirements. Find out what your client can do for themselves. Think about your client's personal preferences and the benefits of being as independent as possible. Remember everyone's rights to privacy, dignity and respect. Watch carefully and report and document any physical or emotional changes in your clients. Our skin is the largest organ of our body and it is very important to keep it clean, healthy and intact. When a person has restricted movement, their skin is under a lot of pressure and seriously at risk of developing pressure ulcers. For example, pressure areas can form if a person stays in a bed or wheelchair for long periods of time, if they have no feeling in parts of their body due to nerve damage, or if they are ageing and slowing down. Areas at high risk are those places where bones are close to the surface. As you can see, people seated in wheelchairs have many high-risk areas. Many clients spend more than eight hours a day in their chairs and often can't reposition themselves if they become uncomfortable. Pressure problems can develop in a very short period of time if people are seated incorrectly. This may lead to discomfort and pain, which can affect their body shape over time. So, the way that you place someone in their wheelchair is very important to ensure their comfort and quality of life. Positioning involves several important decisions and observations. First, choose the right size sling. The size of the sling should be written in the client's care plan. The size of the sling will affect the client's feeling of safety and comfort and will also affect their seated posture when they are placed in the wheelchair using a hoist. As you can see, if a sling is too small, the leg sections will not adequately support the thighs and the legs will hang downwards. It will be difficult to position the client's bottom back into the chair and their head may not be supported. If it is too large, there may be other problems. What's wrong with this sling? The best way to check that you have the right size sling is to measure it against your client when they are lying down on their side. If you hold it against the body, it should reach from the top of their head to the top of the cleft between their buttocks. If the sling has been positioned correctly, the leg sections will have equal length of material exposed between the thighs. It will be in a symmetrical position behind the client's back. You should see that the client's thighs are fully supported when raised. And the upper part of the sling will fully support the person's head where necessary. If one side of the sling is more exposed than the other, it is incorrectly placed and the client will roll to one side when they are lifted. This will make it very difficult to seat your client correctly when they are being lowered into their chair. Always make sure the client's bottom is right back in the chair. By placing your hands on either side of the client's pelvis or hip bones, you can push them firmly backwards as the hoist is lowered. This will allow you to check that the client's pelvis is level and straight, not higher on one side or twisted so one side of their bottom is further forward than the other. Be sure to adopt correct manual handling positions when making these adjustments. When removing the leg sections of the sling, be sure that you don't slide the client forward in their seat at the same time. These days, computer technology helps us a lot with positioning. Pressure pad sensors can be used to carefully determine problem areas for each client. The appropriate cushions are then made to suit individual needs. 
This technology can also show us what happens when a person is not positioned correctly. For example, if they have slipped forward in the chair, the pressure map image clearly shows there has been an increase in pressure at the base of the spine, the sacrum, which has very little muscle padding to protect it. When a client leans to one side of the chair, their weight shifts to that side, increasing pressure under that side of the bottom. When a client is seated badly because they are trying to relieve pressure, they may not be able to explain why they feel uncomfortable. G'day Adam, you look a little bit off balance there, you okay? No, I want to go to bed. You want to go to bed? All right, well what we might do is to see if we can make you a bit more comfortable, okay? Okay. All right, let's have a look at you for a sec. Observe clients in their chairs from the front and also from the side to be sure they are in the best position. To prevent pressure buildup under a client's bottom and thighs, always check that the client's knees and feet are level and even, as this will mean that their pelvis is level. You must also report any changes to the nurse or home supervisor. Always make sure the cushions have a clean cover and are properly placed on the chair. Sometimes the shape of the cushions is misleading and what looks right is actually wrong. Check the label to find out the correct positioning and confirm with the client's care plan. Zips are placed at the back of a seat cushion to prevent them rubbing behind the client's knees. Many clients with disabilities use Rojo cushions for pressure relief. These cushions contain interconnected air-filled rubber cells. They are inflated with a pump and deflated with a valve. They come in different shapes and sizes. It's important to know what style of cushion your client uses so you can check and adjust it correctly. Always handle the cushion with the yellow rope located on one of the cushion corners. Don't hold the cushion by the valve as this can cause the cushion to leak. Always have the valve at the front of the cushion in the chair. This allows for easy adjustments while the client is sitting on the cushion. Do not place a sheepskin, blue sheet or towel on the cushion as this decreases its capacity to relieve pressure. Once you have transferred a client onto their cushion, you must check that it is still inflated. Mm, you look a bit uncomfortable. Are you uncomfortable? Yeah. All right, well, let's have a look. Always start by looking at your client to see if they appear to be seated correctly and are not leaning to one side. Diane, can you give us a hand over here, please? Checking the cushion's level of inflation is easy. Explain what you're about to do. All right, what I'm going to do is just check your cushion, OK? It just means I've got to put my hand just underneath your butt. This is an example of close physical contact, which can make a new client feel uncomfortable. Let's have a look, OK. Put on a glove and gently slide your hand under the client's buttock from the side or the front to feel under the bones of the bottom. There should be one finger thickness of air between the client's bottom and the base of the cushion. Well, no wonder you're uncomfortable, your cushion's gone down. All right, let's pump it up. Thank you, Diane. If your fingers are squashed and you can feel the bottom of the seat base, there is not enough air. If you can wriggle your fingers up and down, there is too much air. All right, how's that feeling now? A bit better? OK. Pressure can also build on other parts of the lower leg and foot, especially if the client is trying to find a place to ease discomfort. Resting the leg on the wheelchair frame may also result in the development of a pressure area. Oh, that's a bit nasty. You've caused a bit of a pressure area down here, so I'm going to have to readjust your legs, OK? If you see red marks in the same place every day, or you can't position your client well, communicate your concerns with either your supervisor, the community nurse, or the appropriate therapist. Always ask your client how they feel before they leave your care. If a client has limited communication skills, use other ways to check they are positioned correctly. For example, many clients use gestures to communicate and a simple thumbs up may be all that's required.